Hey everyone, Gary Simon of Corsetro. So today we're gonna take a quick look at a really cool tool that I just discovered and it allows you to very quickly and easily create CSS animations for your web layouts or your app layouts. So you can access it over here at keyframes.app, one of these snazzy new, uh, relatively new domain extensions. And basically, I you can either choose to use this app, um, like a web app version of the editor, and it just gives you this little hello graphic. But um, the real use case, in my opinion, is the free Chrome extension. And if you click this, it'll say, you know, for me, it's already added. You'll want to add that, and it shows up right here in the upper right hand corner. Um, so after you have that added, I'm going to show you now how you actually use this app. And we're going to do it in, in two different ways. We're going to do it with our own very quick project from scratch. And then also I'll show you how to use it on any existing page, really. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to go to Visual Studio Code here. And I have a blank project open. And um, we're going to create a new index.html file. And by the way, I'm not going to sit here typing out everything. I want this to be relatively quick. Uh, let's get this larger so you can see it. Um, and then also we'll have a main.css file. And here, just in the top, I'm going to uh, refer to my other monitor on my uh, desk here. And I'm just going to copy just some quick lines right here. All right, so if I hit Control B to get rid of that sidebar, we'll see I've added um, a link rel to the, the main.css file that we just created, and also Montserrat. We have a, a Google web font here added, so it doesn't look like crap. So um, in here in the actual HTML section, uh, again, I'm just going to copy and paste some really simple HTML. So we have a div class of a container, got a div inside here, and we have. Um, H1, my awesome headline. We have a paragraph with, with some lorem ipsum text and then a call to action button with a class of CTA. So now going to our main.css file, once again, I'm going to just go ahead and copy and paste just some quick rule sets here. So we have a body with a background color uh, with our font here and the font family, our container, just some H1 paragraph and our CTA button here. So if I save this and bring back the sidebar with control B and right click on index.html, I'm going to open with live server here. Um, if you don't have that added, um, I, be I believe it already comes shipped with it. You can just reveal and explore and double click on an index.html. So when we open this with the live that ah, I already have another one open one second here. Let's see here. Manage extension. I'm just going to go ahead and close out the other instance there and try this again. Technical difficulties, open with live server. There we go. So this is what we're looking at. Um, let me increase this just a bit. All right, so the use case in this comes when you say, okay, well, I, I've already, you know, I have the static version of my interface here and I want to add animation to it. Now, traditionally, you would go back to your main.css file and you would start adding or writing your your um, your your keyframe animations and, and everything that you want uh, and you would go back and forth and whatever the usefulness in this tool now however comes when you can simply use the keyframes icon right here you click on this and it will say click on any element that you want to animate so it's going to hover it's kind of like the code inspector really uh, of chrome and so you hover over what you want to animate. Well, say, let's say for instance, we wanted this this section right here, um, the My Austin headline, the paragraph and the, the button all to come in and kind of just fade in. Well, that's why I added that, that empty div right there because that gives us access to this container right here. So if we click on it, we'll now see that we have this area um, on the right hand side where we have our CSS properties, but we also have this timeline down here so it's very handy as you can imagine. So the way this works is uh, you click on the timeline to add a step. So by default, a step is added at 0%. And you start setting your different properties. So it's a set up into transform, colors and fonts, size and spacing, border is in shadows. So to actually work with transform, 
we'll see by default, it looks like these are already have values in them, but they're really just placeholder values. So there's no values by default. Now I found that there was kind of an issue um, when I'm creating these keyframes that it was putting XX in the rotate field. So I'm always going to put that to zero. Next, let's say again, we want it to come in from the top and from a zero opacity and fade in and fade in and down. So what we would do is we would translate Y as that's on the Y axis up and down. And we would say something like maybe we can use uh, percentage values or we could use pixels and we'll just say negative 10%. So now we can see it's already kind of came up there. Let's change this to 15%. So it'll update live on the fly. And if we go to colors and font, we have access to opacity. So we'll put a zero opacity right there. So now as somebody's calling me, if we go ahead, let's say to the very end at 100% and left click, we've now added a keyframe. So now we can adjust this. Let's bring back the opacity to one. All right, now it's still at the top. So we have to change the translate Y position simply to zero. All right, so now we can see we have some other simple properties, uh, animation duration, iterations, delay, and timing. These are just referring to CSS properties and their associated values. Um, we obviously wouldn't want the iterations to be infinite, as in we don't want it to loop. So we can just change this to a different property and forwards is a CSS pro or value for the, um, the iterations so that it only happens once. Three seconds is also probably going to be long, but if we hit start anyhow, just to look at this, we could see it's now showing us live in the browser what this animation looks like. So let's just change this to maybe one second. You can also change the timing. Um, let's try ease, hit start. Oh, okay, much better. Now it may not appear very smooth because of the frame rate of this video, uh, but it does look pretty much ideal in terms of how I would want it. Um, so now at this point, if you're happy with the animation that you you've have, you can click on show output CSS and here is the code that you would add. So in our case, let's say we want to add the actual animation property and this is the element that we want to animate, which happens to be that empty div or it's not empty rather, but it's just a div without a class or a name. So what we would do go back here and again the one we want to animate is this div right here all right so we could simply say container div and paste this your animation you can go ahead and change that to a custom name if you want go back to our CSS and then copy all of that the actual keyframes or just like that hit save go back and now if we refresh, now it's permanently baked into our interface. So then let's say for instance, sorry, you add that, you can do it again if you want. So click on this, click on the element you want to animate. We'll say the button. All right. Maybe we want the button to kind of slide in from the left. Um, and maybe we'll have a multi-step uh, keyframe animation here. So let's do that. Um, we'll say translate X will on at zero percent will be negative hmm, 30 pixels so we're just starting here from the left we'll take our opacity to zero all right that's cool and then we'll go ahead and maybe around oh by the way let's make the rotate zero because there's an issue there 76 percent or so we'll say let's push it over 15 pixels or maybe just 10 pixels. And we'll make the opacity at this point um, 0.76. And then we'll come out here to the very end at 100%. This will be zero and this will be one. All right. This will also be a delay of about 0.3 seconds. We'll use ease for timing and then animation duration Let's make it kind of quick, maybe 0.7. Also, this will be forwards. Start animation. 
All right, so it's not going to show you um, with the original animations. So let's go to show output CSS. We'll copy this. And this time we're going to have to make sure we change the animation property, um, the animation name actually. So we want to add this on to our CTA. So this is going to be your animation too, we'll just say. We'll go back, copy this, paste this, your animation two, save it. All right, so now let's refresh. Now it's showing up though here, uh, right there, so it doesn't look correct. So we're just gonna have to adjust it real quick so that the opacity by default is set to zero on this element. There we go, much, much better. All right, so of course, you can do this on any live website that you currently have access to or you can access in your browser. So for instance, uh, if we go to elegantthemes.com, let's say for instance, I, you wanna see what it would look like if they animated this little window right here, this module, that's this little pop-up. Well, what we can do is click on this, click on the ele element you want to animate, and let's just do this again just for a little bit more muscle memory. Um, so what we can do is, I uh, let's say, let's try to skew it as well. So we're going to put zero in rotation. Scale, let's set to 0 0.7 and maybe 0 0.8. There we go. Uh, let's see, skew x let's try 25 deg or yeah maybe negative actually you know what let's do 25 degrees that way there we go in this q y um and then also opacity will be zero great now let's add one at 100 percent just for the fun of it and we'll put in scale one this is going to be zero degrees. I and mean, we don't see it yet because the opacity was, uh, yeah, uh, at zero still. So now, um, one second, forwards, we'll have ease. Awesome stuff. And there you go. All right, so hopefully you found that useful. I know for myself, I will probably use this tool uh, when I go forward and add animations to any uh, layouts that I create in the future. All right, so these people are trying to call me. Make sure you subscribe here if you haven't yet. Most people who watch my videos don't subscribe and that's probably a standard thing. It's like 80% are non-subscribers who watch my stuff. Subscribe there, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys real soon. All right, goodbye.